So we've talked about the business benefits of the SAP Business One software that you are currently using inside your organization. But one of the things that I'd like to do is just give you a quick demonstration, a quick overview, if you like, uh, of the SAP Business One software, just so that you, uh, if you haven't had the chance to go in and sit down with the software, just so you can say that you've, you've seen it uh, and you've got the basics of navigating around the software. Now, important to note, uh, as part of the ASUG OneSource website, uh, you have access to a whole range of detailed demonstration videos, detailed training videos, in fact, that will walk you through each of the modules inside SAP Business One. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but I just want to talk with you briefly uh, about the way that you do work inside SAP Business One and what are some of the things that you can expect. So what you're seeing right now is SAP Business One and this is the SAP Business One version for SAP HANA. So this is the version that uses the very latest SAP in-memory database technologies. And that makes it very fast when you're doing your data analytics with large amounts of data. All right. So it doesn't necessarily have that much of an impact on your day-to-day -day transaction entry unless you're processing thousands of transactions every day and those transactions have hundreds of lines in uh, each one of those transactions and there are business one customers out there who are processing that kind of transaction volume and they do see uh, distinct advantages for using SAP HANA uh, as their transactional uh, system but it's really designed to give you the ability to you know to really do that analytics now one of the other things that it does as well when you're running on SAP business one uh, version for SAP HANA and that's the last time I'm going to give you the full product name. Um, but when you're running on that version, it also gives you access to a whole range of these different cockpits. So this is what's called a cockpit. And you can customize this cockpit to suit your own requirements. Now, if you're working on the version for SQL Server, you can still use the cockpit. All right, it's just that the content that you can put in the cockpit will vary between HANA and SAP and SQL Server rather. So for example, in 9.3, one of the new features is you can come in here and you can click on this little icon and you can say, well, look, I want to have a different looking template uh, for my, for my uh, cockpit. So you could say, well, look, I'm in sales, so I'll pick the sales cockpit and then I'll say OK. And you'll see what will happen is SAP Business One will automatically render out for you a new cockpit with all these different uh, widgets inside the cockpit. So you've got some analytics widgets, you've got what's a KPI widget, uh, you have this business process widget and so on and so forth. So this is just an example of, uh, of what you can do. So you can now go ahead and edit that and then when you're finished you just click here on the little back arrow and then that commits it into place for you. All right. So then you can also then if you if you wanted to you could come back and you could say well actually no I didn't want that one. Uh, you could say well I'm in the finance team so I want the finance uh, cockpit so I'll say okay to that and then you'll see when you choose the finance role that you'll get a different cockpit. The widgets that are displayed will be different, a different financial process widget. It's now showing you a KPI of your, your payables overdue and you can see when you hover over these it shows you additional information which is kind of nice. Um, and just the same in these processes. If you're looking here at uh, I want to do my financial reports, you'll see you've got this little drop down list here and you can then choose the financial reports from here. The other way that you would work with SAP Business One is from the menu and the menu pops up on the side here. Now what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of these things I'm going to swap to a different look and feel for SAP Business One just so you're familiar with the, the two different ones. But this is what's called the Fiori style uh, or the Fiori user interface because there is an SAP standard user interface called Fiori. Uh, and that's what this it looks like. It uses this, this same design, this same user experience um, using these colors, using these rounded widgets and so on. And as you get more and more familiar with SAP, assuming that you do, uh, you will see more and more solutions coming out with this Fiori uh, look and feel. Not only the SAP Business One application, but also mobile apps and so on.
So you can come in here and you can pick the module that you want to look at. For example, you might want to go in here into your opportunities and, or you might want to go here into your sales and you might want to go in and do a sales order. All right, so just by simply clicking on each one of those menu options, it will then bring up that specific screen for you. The other thing that you can do is you can also go up here into modules on the top menu and then you can fire off this functionality from here. So I can go into modules, sales AR, and then go to sales orders and open up the sales order screen from here. And there you'll see there's your standard sales order screen. Nice and easy to work with, very, very um, simple in the design. It can be a, a little bit busy, some of these screens, but remember, we've got uh, detailed videos that show you how to do all this. You can tailor this screen to fit your own requirements. You can remove fields, you can add fields, you can change them around, all right? You've also got this ability to have what we call user-defined fields. So these are additional fields that you have uh, added in or somebody in your organization has added in. You can also then bring up additional analytics on the side of the order. And you can take advantage of additional functionality like the recommendations function. Now let me just give you a quick snapshot on that. If I call up an existing sales order, and we'll just use these video buttons which help us move through the screens. When I select one of these products, for example, it automatically brings up these recommendations. So it says recommendations for this particular customer, you might wanna suggest that they buy some of these other products. And then as you are selecting the different products, it can come in and it can say, all right, well, customers who bought this item also bought uh, another item. So again, it's giving your salespeople the ability to make those kinds of changes and or make those kinds of suggestions rather uh, and then drive additional revenue. So that's just an example. So that's the SAP HANA Fiori cockpit that you're looking at there. Now you can go in if you have the rights and I do because I'm a kind of a super user, I can go in here and I can go into my system initialization, I can go to my general settings and I can come in here into my cockpit and I can go in and say, look, I just don't, I just want to see the standard cockpit, not the Fiori style. I just want to see the standard cockpit and I'll say update. Now in 9.3, it asks you, 9.3 is the latest version, it asks you, hey, do you want to apply this to all new users and users that are set up to use the defaults? Um, or do you want to use it for all users regardless? So I'm going to say, I'm going to set this for all users and I'll say update. So that change has now been made and you'll see it tells you, hey, um, in order for me to make these changes, they're gonna take effect next time you log in. Do you, um, do you wanna make those changes? And if you do, all the open windows will be closed. Do you wanna continue? And I'll say yes. And what you'll see, SAP Business One goes and restarts. And then when you come in here, and you log back in again, and I'm gonna duplicate the logging back in process just by going in here into my choose company option. And I'm going to say, this is the company I want, and I'm going to choose it. And it logs me out and back in again, and now you're getting the traditional SAP cockpit. So if you're running SAP Business One, and you're using SQL Server as your backend database, this is the cockpit style that you're going to see. So you can have the same cockpit with, with, with HANA as well, uh, but it's just a matter of you know which way you have chosen to configure the system. So when you're operating inside your modules, you'll see that the modules are grouped according to the functional areas. So you've got your administration, your financials, the CRM capability, your sales, your purchasing. It's fairly self-explanatory what you have here. And one of the best ways to get familiar with SAP Business One is to make sure you've been given access to a demo data system and then just go in and start having a little bit of a play around. Again, take advantage of the ASUG One Source videos, but go in there and start actually taking a look around and seeing what are all of these screens? What do they do? Now, one of the things you'll notice as well, when you are opening up a me uh, module menu, 
you'll see the additional screens are here but then see this one the sales report see how that's a little folder icon that means that if you click on there it's going to open up and show you additional detailed information underneath that so bear that in mind you've got folders and then you've got forms as well now you've got the ability to customize the 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 cockpits here we've got as i said we've got a session on how you do that but fundamentally it's giving you the ability to tailor the entire user experience as I mentioned before to fit the way that you want to work and of course when I am looking at these cockpits you'll see again with SQL Server you've got for example a service cockpit or a finance cockpit and when you bring that up you'll see there's a widget here it gives you some instructions if you want to add a dashboard click the tool icon and choose settings so this is the tool icon up here so you can click on that and you can choose settings and then it'll bring you up a listing of all of the different widgets that you've got now when I'm running with HANA on the back end I've got a lot more widgets than I have with SQL Server um, but again it's the same concept I can go in here and I can say I want to see my top five most visited customers in here so I can select that but now the thing to remember is I can select multiple uh, dashboards here so I can say I've got my top five visited customers and my top five fixed items and my top five customers with sales amounts so you might be thinking well hang on how can you show all three of those in that one area I'll go and say OK and you'll see what will happen here is each one of these dashboards will render and then you can move between the dashboards just by using these arrows up here for example right so I can say I want to see my top five fixed items I want to see my top five visited customers and so on and so forth so again I'm going to go back in here into my settings and I'll say you know what I actually want to see my aged payables overdue in here and I will then untick these ones and I'll say OK and again the the new widget will render for me now some of these take a little bit of a, a different amounts of time to render for the very first time just depending on how much data is underneath it but that's the advantage uh, of you know having that database sitting there in the background as it's doing all that work for you now you can also uh, go in here and you'll see I've got my common functions so you can come in here and you can add the modules or add the screens that you use all the time across here into your common functions. so you can just click and drag that function across there so now my sales orders is here so you can even get rid of that menu completely and then just drive the entire system just from the screens that you use on a regular basis so now if I want to go into sales orders simply click here on the common functions in the sales order and there it is now you'll notice exactly the same screen as we were working with before it just looks different okay so the user experience is different some people prefer this some people prefer Fiori it's really up to you which way um, you want to do it last thing I'm going to show you um, is when you are here inside your modules one of the things you'll notice underneath each one of these modules is that there is a folder for the reports so here in our sales module you've got sales reports in purchasing guess what purchasing reports so the reports are very very easy to get to by module or you can come down here and just go into the reports menu and then it'll give you exactly the same way to access those reports and the same functionality here if one of the reports that you run on a regular basis is your sales analysis you can click and drag that across here and there it is that report is now here in your common functions so you go and run your sales and analysis report specify all the parameters here that you want to narrow the report down do you want it annually monthly do you want a quarterly report what kind of transactions do you want to show and so on and then you go and you say okay and it will then generate the report now sometimes the reports can come up with no data why would it come up with no data well maybe for example you might pick a date range and a selection of uh, parameters here where there actually isn't any data for that now I'm using some sample data that doesn't have anything for 2018 so I'm just going to go here and I'm going to drop this back into 2016 so I'm going to say from the first to the first 2016 through to the 31st of the 12th 2016 and then when I say OK you'll now see that we actually get um, a result in our report information now business one when it generates reports it actually shows you the data first very important point to note shows you the data first 
So you can now say, oh yeah, well actually I have what I need. I don't need to chop down some trees and print out some reports. Or you can say, you know what, I really do actually need that printed out. So very, very simple. You can go in here, you can preview the report, you can print it, or you can even go in here and you can email it to somebody else inside or outside the organization if you have the rights to do that. So that's it. That's a little bit of a quick view of the SAP Business One look and feel and navigating around inside the system. I encourage you to play around and I encourage you take advantage of the videos that we've put together for you on ASUG OneSource. You'll find them grouped together in our 15 minute fundamentals. And then there's a whole range of like little demo videos which people find very, very helpful just for getting an overview of how a particular module works or an overview of a process like going from a quote right through to the cash process where you're finally getting paid. All of those videos you're gonna find on one source. Uh, and of course, you can, as I have done, you can come in here into your cockpit and I'll go to my home cockpit. You can come in here into your browser widget and you can go in here into your settings and you can set up your system and you can point it to asug.com slash business dash one which is the URL for uh, the one source community on asug.com and then you can say OK and then you'll see what will happen that website will render inside that browser widget for you uh, and so you can always get to that latest information including as I said there it is there's our training videos so one click takes you into all the training videos and you can drill down and look at each one of those training videos in detail. One last point I'm gonna make, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but this entire session I've been doing is running inside a web browser. So yes, SAP Business One will run inside a web browser. Um, this is one of the things that we provide as, as cloud providers for our customers. Uh, we're utilizing this capability. SAP have their own web browser functions. Uh, it has quite a few restrictions. With this web browser function that we offer, there are no restrictions, all right? You can run any, um, any product, any add-on, whatever the case may be. Anything that you can use with your standard on-premise business one will run here inside the web browser. And that's because we're using a little bit of extra technology called Ericom Connect, which comes highly recommended. And if you uh, joined us at last year's uh, uh, Biz One conference in Anaheim and came along to my cloud session, you would probably would have heard me talk a little bit about it. But uh, again, highly recommended solution for you for deploying SAP Business One uh, inside a web browser. So with that, I'm going to wrap up our little demo and we're going to go back and talk a little bit more about uh, what's inside SAP Business One.